the last video where I tested the different materials you would use for a panel and a speaker did well. So I thought I would take it a little bit further and test the stuffing that you would put inside the box, typically, when you're building a speaker. And I should say up front that there's a little bit of confusion surrounding these videos. I'm talking from a do-it-yourself standpoint here. I'm talking directly to people that build their own speakers and, you know, treat their own rooms or do stuff like that. Not go out and buy a certain product or, you know, a certain piece of gear or equipment. This is almost entirely 100% for the DIY type person. So the stuffing that I'm going to be testing is the ever popular polyfill. That's a mouthful. And you can see that I'm weighing it and that's because this is exactly how much polyfill I have on hand. So I want the other two materials to match that, which is 58 grams. Now I'm not a big fan of polyfill. I always thought it was not effective. It was uh, just uh, kind of placebo. You put it in a box, you say it's stuffed, but it's not really. Because the stuff is kind of too light, in my opinion. I've always preferred fiberglass as a stuffing. Okay, even invented boxes. Okay, so the next one is the fiberglass I talked about. And I'm using the scale to get the right amount of that because I definitely have a lot of that on hand. And the last one is rock wool. And once again, I'll be weighing that to get the right amount to put in the box so that they're all equal in weight. Okay, not in the space that they take up because rock wool is definitely heavier, denser, takes up less space. Also, I changed my test. This isolates it from the workbench and cleans up the bottom end a lot. But it doesn't in any way invalidate what I found in the last set of measurements because everything came through clearly in that. You could see the differences in the panels and we really weren't seeing very much happening down low anyway. So the first set of measurements is with the box empty like before. And this will be the baseline, you could say, the one that we'll compare everything else with. And because there was also a little bit of confusion about this last time, I'm going to talk about the test setup I have here. How I'm doing these measurements is with this accelerometer, which is taped to the top of the box. This measures how much the panel vibrates in and out when the speaker is moving. So that energy from the speaker is transferred to the panel and the panel vibrates and the accelerometer measures that and then it plots it on the computer for every frequency from 30 hertz right up to 2000 hertz. You see the magnitude of that movement. The higher the peaks are, the more that panel is moving. With the empty box measurement done, I can put in the first stuffing sample and I'm going with polyfill for the first one. And I'm putting it in half the speaker, the side that doesn't have the driver. And I'm also making sure that the stuffing actually touches the panel when I put the panel back on. Uh, I had a few comments in the last video about, you know, why would the stuffing actually, you know, damp the panel? And what happens with the stuffing being in the box, whether it's touching the panel or not, is it absorbs some of the energy from the driver as the driver is operating and therefore it can't reach the panel. So the more energy that the stuffing absorbs, the less will reach the panels. The results from the polyfill come as no surprise to me. It kind of confirms what I was thinking all along. There's a little bit of a change up higher and overall there's a little bit of a drop in output from the panel but not a huge amount. So I took that out and I put the fiberglass in and I ran the test again. And here are the results from that. Once again, not a huge change, but obviously better than the polyfill, especially up higher. And across the board, there was a, you know, a better reduction in output from the panel. Then I took out the fiberglass and I put in the rock wool and I tested it again. Whoop. 
And I'm looking at that right here. And there's really not a huge difference between this and the fiberglass. So I'm going to call it a tie between the two. So that takes care of the three stuffings. And there are other options for that, of course, but I don't have any. But I do have something to damp the panel directly. And that is 1 8 inch thick rubber that I can glue right onto the panel in two places so it avoids that brace in the middle. And I use spray adhesive to put these on and I also clamped on a piece of plywood for about an hour to make sure that it was well stuck on there. It wasn't gonna come loose. And then I tested it and here you can see the results. This actually had less of an effect than I thought it would. In reality, it doesn't look any better than the original measurement, not overall. I mean, we still have some pretty big peats up higher, and there was no overall reduction in the output down lower. So I peeled that off again, and I put a shim on top of the brace so that when I put the panel back in place, it will be making contact with that brace and effectively cut the panel size in half so that it's well braced and tested it again, and here are the results from that. This shows some significant reduction down low. Also, there's a big dip at 650. That certainly can't hurt, but there are still some higher peaks. So overall, I can't say that that is much of an improvement over the original. Got major peaks around 900 and 1800 hertz, and those are potentially more audible than anything you'd find down low. So going from that, I decided to try something else, and that would be doubling up the panel. So I put the layer of MDF that I had on the side on top of the oak plywood layer and tested it again. And here you can see the results from that. That shows significant reduction down low, um, around 200 to 300, same. Got a bit of a dip between 300 and 800, but our 900 uh, hertz resonance is still there and we're still seeing something around 1800. But there is quite a valley in between those two. So that is, a, that is an improvement overall. I've got one more thing to try though, and that's uh, what's known as CLD, uh, constrained layer damping. That's where you take a panel and you glue it to another panel with a flexible adhesive in between. In my case, I'm using silicone. I'll spread that on liberally and then I'll sandwich the other panel on top. I'm staying with the MDF. And there's no harm in testing it while it's wet, so I'll do that right away, and we can look at the results here. Even though you're not reducing as much down low, the response is flatter overall, as in you're losing more up in the high end, which is I think is better overall. So that was yesterday when I ran all those tests and the silicone wasn't dry. I've left it to dry overnight and now I can test it again with it dry and we'll look at those results. Okay, well I got them right in front of me so I can talk about them right here, right now. And you can see them as I'm talking. And when I compare them directly to how it looked when it was wet, there's not a significant difference, but there's a definite improvement overall. So if you're looking for the ultimate way to build your speakers so that you're going to reduce the amount of output from the panels, I would say that it would be a combination of the correct stuffing on the inside. I would avoid polyfill unless you can pack it in there to make up for the, you know, the lightness of it. Also use bracing. Uh, I wouldn't say as much as you can because what happens when you use too much bracing is you, you can actually make separate boxes inside boxes and you get different resonances inside the box. 
which can be a problem. You have to be very careful about that. I would say, you know, use bracing where it's needed to cut panels down to size. Like when you put a brace in the middle of a panel, you're cutting the panel in half. You're making two smaller panels instead of one larger one. And then to put the icing on the cake, you could do this CLD technique, which seems to be quite effective at reducing the magnitude of the vibrations right across the board.